FM. Welcome to the EY Entrepreneur of the Year Awards 2016. EY Entrepreneur of the Year 2016 recognized and rewarded India's most exceptional entrepreneurs and business leaders who have brought about change through their exemplary work, grit and determination. People always talk about the disruption that's taking place within the fintech sector and how that's going to threaten traditional banking. But when you look at some of the banking players today and the disruption that they themselves are doing in their own model, even if it means cannibalizing, you know, their traditional uh, customer base, I think it's pretty phenomenal. Celebrating the stories of these winners is the Passion to Win series, showcasing India's best innovators and game changers. Hello and welcome to the fourth and final episode of the Passion to Win series which showcases the entrepreneurial journey of the winners of the EY Entrepreneur of the Year 2016 awards. I'm Shireen Bhan. Our first story today is about two brothers who overcame great challenges to establish one of India's most successful pharma companies. Let's take a look at the entrepreneurial journey of Sampradha Singh and Basudeo Narayan Singh of Alchem Laboratories. Sampradha Singh started a distribution business in Patna under the banner Magath Pharma in the year 1960 and invited his younger brother Vasudev Narayan Singh to join him. Once I took the decision, I started working wholeheartedly with my brother in distribution business and we were one of the best distributors in Bihar for multinational companies for some time and then we started Alchem in the year 1973. Starting a business in those days was not easy. We came from farmers family and we have the problem of finance. So ultimately we had to take the help of relatives, we made them shareholders and we started Alchem with a seed capital of 5 lakhs of rupees. The brothers shifted to Bombay from Patna to set up Alchem Laboratories. We shifted to Mumbai from the so-called village called Patna in the year 1973. We had no place to stay. We were staying in the hotel. One of the friends of uh, ours gave us 5,000 square feet space at Kalina where we kept our office and my, my, myself, my brother and two more persons were, were sitting there. In 1978, Alchem Laboratories established its first manufacturing plant in Taloja. In the year 1978, we set up our factory at Taloja. That was a landmark decision, that was a very important decision. And there we had taken a, all, uh, we had taken loan from bank, we had taken loan from Maharashtra Development Corporation. So that way the Alchem's growth has started. I was, my brother was in Mumbai, then I used to go to Patna. I started looking after sales and marketing. The company started by focusing its activities on antibacterials and NSAIDs. We had started with two products called Brodicillin and Metron. Brodicillin uh, is called Ampicillin and uh, our brand name was Brodicillin. That I am talking of the year 1973-74. And uh, the second product was Metronidazole. And our brand name was Metron, which was very much liked by the doctors. We got some, we started that way, but we got the real breakthrough came. We launched a product called Cefataxim, a very important anti-infective product. And our brand name was Taxim. 
these three had the competition with Omnatex of Hext Pharmaceuticals. So ultimately, the sale of this taxim for the first time in pharma industry got became a product of 100 crores, which none of the pharma company had done so far. It was a great mo motivation for us. And since then, we did not look back. Sampradha Singh attributes the growth of Alchem Laboratories to its employees. People were working like all family members and that had been a very success uh, in our life, in our business industry. Under the leadership of the two brothers, Alchem Laboratories has grown exponentially and expanded globally to more than 50 countries. The biggest reason for the success of Alchem is number one, the ambition of the promoters. Especially Mr. Sampradha Singh has always been a big dreamer and, this, and Mr. B.N. Singh compliments it greatly because he's a very operational, hands-on, number-driven guy. So I think this deadly duo, this deadly combination has worked for Alchem and it continues to uh, work uh, even now. Due to their grit and determination, Sampradha Singh and Basu Dil Narayan Singh have both made Alchem Laboratories the fifth largest pharma company in India. Well, that was the inspiring story of the two brothers who established one of the top pharma companies in the country, Sampradha Singh and Basudeo Narayan Singh, who were jointly awarded the EY Entrepreneur of the Year 2016 award in the Life Sciences and Healthcare category. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the winners, Mr. Sampradha Singh and Mr. Basudeo Narayan Singh for Life Science and Healthcare Award. <laughs> It's time now for us to take a short break, but on the other side, we introduce you to an entrepreneur who's changed the face of the Indian media and entertainment industry. The journey of Uday Shankar of Star India, up next. Welcome back, you're watching Passion to Win. The next winner was a newspaper reporter from Bihar who today heads India's biggest TV empires. Uday Shankar brought about changes in the Indian television news business and has changed the Indian television entertainment scene as well. Here's a look at his entrepreneurial journey. Uday Shankar made the shift from being a print journalist in Patna to being the television news producer in Delhi in 1995. Z Group was setting up a 20 minute news bulletin and I went and uh, offered myself the money that I was getting was very low so it was a struggle in any case journalists didn't make that much money those days and but it was great fun I learned a great deal it was a small team uh, it was low on technology like most television productions in this country in those days but it was it was great on initiative and that's what, uh, you know, and it was a great learning experience. Shankar slowly moved on to become director of Archturk when it launched in the year 2000. Archturk was the first channel that decisively took the viewer to the spot. And the technology was not enabled for that. Regulations were not enabled for that. So, you know, today everybody has broadband. That time only newspaper organizations could get a broadband connection in order to, you know, something that was essential to send the video. So, it was all about enterprise, ingenuity and a can-do attitude. That was the fun part of it. But also, Ashtak was able to, you know, because it was coming up without a baggage, it was, uh, it was a start. We were able to create a completely new framework for news. Arshak brought in the common man or the common woman in, in, at the center of the news and everything else, you know, was, was, was around that. Uday Shankar was offered the top job at Star News in 2004. What attracted me uh, to Star News was, was exactly that 
the fact that it was not doing well. It was doing quite badly actually. And Asta was such a giant success. Could we create an opportunity in front of Aztec? You know, could we create a product that could stand up to Aztec? That was a very interesting proposition and that got my juices flowing. In 2007, Oday Shankar was appointed the CEO of Star India, an entertainment channel to help turn its fortunes around. After joining Star, when I did my first big show, it was a, it was a, it was a damn squib. Didn't do well at all. That all my bosses were extremely comfortable with that. They just said that's the nature of the beast. Some things work, some things don't work, and that took away. You know that 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 was probably one of the defining moments for me in Star. That I realized that I need to try out new things. I have the license. Uday Shankar helped Star India's foray into regional languages and coverage of sports other than cricket. We felt that the power of regional languages was going to be very big, so we started we started expanding in regional markets. So Bengali, Marathi, Kerala, Tamil Nadu was always there, but. Karnataka, Andhra, all these parts, and then we so we built a very uh, sizable portfolio in Hindi entertainment, and then we started thinking about what more could be done. We thought this country's engagement with sports needed to grow. So we thought we should go into get into sports. Similarly, you know, once we built a portfolio and we've gone way beyond cricket, we we continue to be the biggest provider of cricket in this country, but. Other sports, and we have created sports which which were part of the Indian heritage, but had been forgotten. Things like kabaddi. In 2015, Oday helped launch the digital entertainment platform Hotstar. We put together a great team, uh, brought some really fine leaders who have created a great product. Today, huge amounts of content is being cons consumed digitally. People are watching 30-minute shows. 60-minute shows. People are watching uh, sports ma games, all on Hotstar. Uday Shankar has got many qualities that have helped him remain on top of his game. I'm a big believer in curiosity. Curiosity is is extremely powerful, and I remain curious. And uh, I'm a big believer in diversity. The diversity of skill, diversity of talent, diversity of People that you work with, diversity of exposure. One of Uday's close acquaintances shares some of his strengths. You know, he's a great thinker. He can build a great set of people, and he's very good at alliances. I think that's what makes him successful. In addition, of course, to the fact that he thinks like an owner, and he's very, very passionate about what he does. Star India under Uday Shankar's leadership has become one of India's most valued broadcast networks, and he is taking it to a whole new frontier of growth. Uday Shankar, the chairman and CEO of Star India, was awarded the EY Entrepreneur of the Year Award 2016 in the Entrepreneurial CEO category. Please put your hands together to congratulate Mr. Uday Shankar, Entrepreneurial CEO of the Year. It's now time for a short break, but on the other side, the story of Vikas Oberoi of Oberoi Realty up next. Welcome back. You're watching Passion to Win. The next story is about a first-generation builder who's transformed both Mumbai's landscape as well as his company's fortunes. Vikas Oberoi has not looked back since his first project in the Mumbai suburb of Kandivili. Let's take a look at his entrepreneurial story. Vikas Oberoi started assisting his father's construction business at a very young age. I started working with him at a very early age. And uh, by uh, by 85, 86, when I was like 15 and 16, I started uh, assisting him. And uh, by the time I was 20, I was like completely 
uh, you know, uh, drenched into work. And uh, I don't even know within that phase when I started taking over and uh, he kind of started taking a back seat. In 1998, Vikas Oberoi took over as managing director of the company and renamed it Oberoi Realty. His first purchase was Novartis's 60-acre campus in Gorekau, a suburb in Mumbai. 2000 is when we uh, got an opportunity to buy this land parcel uh, at Goregaon. This was an 80-acre land parcel. It was a competitive bid uh, and uh, we really put our best foot forward to ensure that we get it because uh, we wanted to build our company based on the land parcel that we got. Oberoi Realty is one of India's only listed zero debt company. We realized that we've got real estate expertise. We can buy land, uh, design, execute much better than many of uh, the people who had real estate as a big component in their business. So education requires big land parcel, a uh, big, uh, uh, you know, it's got a big input of uh, uh, real estate in it, be it buying land, executing that project in time, uh, lies on with the government for approvals and all that. We do it for our other businesses. Similar to that is uh, your uh, uh, shopping mall and so are the hospitals. All we needed was uh, the front end who'd operate these businesses. And they also make sense because they make great annuity businesses also. So this is where we, uh, 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 you know, really decided to get into other verticals. Vikas Soberoy talks about his connection with Michael Kaduri of the Peninsula Hotels Group and CLP Par. I've been very lucky. I have uh, come across people who've always uh, taught me a lot in life. And uh, uh, one of those very interesting gentlemen was uh, Michael Kaduri. He is the owner of China Light and Power and also uh, the owner of Peninsula. So I was very intrigued to meet uh, this gentleman who told me that uh, if you want to really, uh, uh, you know, ensure that your company and your family lasts uh, its lifetime and not your lifetime, do this 100 year test. Everything that you do, test it whether it will be good for the next 100 years. Whatever action you take, you make sure that, you know, it, you know it's, it's run through this 100 year test. Significant advantages of Oberoi Realty have been its well-timed land purchases and excellent project execution. We have an outsourcing model. Uh, we outsource all our construction and uh, so we are, uh, we continue to retain knowledge and IP of our business within the company. So we are a top heavy company at no point in time we as a strategy want to grow beyond 750 people. We are today close to 700 people uh, in the organization. So as we speak, we have about 20 million square feet uh, under construction. Uh, all of that is in Mumbai. We have aspirations of going into other parts of India. Kumar Mangalam Birla of the Aditya Birla Group, a close friend of Vikas Oberoi's, shares qualities of Vikas Oberoi that make him stand apart from the rest. What sets him apart is the fact that uh, his company is so financially strong and I'm sure that he will use that to his advantage to grow very aggressively in the future like he has done so far. Vikas Soberoi's hallmark of premium luxury real estate projects have changed the face of Mumbai's suburbs. With his vision of developing a city within a city, Vikas Soberoi seeks to tar over Mumbai and India's cityscape. Vikas Oberoi, the Chairman and Managing Director of Oberoi Realty, was awarded the EY Entrepreneur of the Year 2016 award in the real estate and infrastructure category. May I invite Mr. Vikas Oberoi to receive this award. With that, 
it is time for us to wrap up this special four-part series celebrating the stories of the winners of the 18th EVI Entrepreneur of the Year Awards. We hope you enjoyed them as much as we did bringing them to you. Till next year from all of us here, goodbye and thanks for watching. Focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable.